Welcome aboard. Thank you so much for keeping it on BS Television. And this is the Media Roundtable. Every Friday comes to you as journalists in their perspective. I know many of these journalists have gone into other sectors, but once a journalist, always one. Your journalistic instinct will always make you do things a certain way because you are a journalist. And of course, there's been a lot happening through this week. Parliament has been recalled from recess. And now, of course, it's great to know that they're back. What are the key issues? We have the Director of Communications Parliament, like I said earlier. Probably we want to delve into the key issues as well, because also some member, uh, members of Parliament said we need this Parliament back because whatever is being said about Parliament is tainting our image. How do we handle and all that stuff? So we'll be having um, that conversation on what's on the other paper. But also, uh, the Dokolo Oman Member of Parliament rest, the by-election is on. Uh, nominations were done. Campaigns are in full gear and the election is next week on Thursday. We'll have a, a debate, a candidate's debate coming through on Monday, 10 p.m. So be able uh, to watch it. But what are the odds for and against either of the candidates who will be able to take the day? That's a conversation we want to be going into at a later stage. The National Unity Platform and their disciplinary action against the Deputy President, uh, Buganda Region, also still takes shape. And many saying, Right thing, wrong thing, is it being handled the right way, wrong way, whatever it is. And NRM as well, remember, is on their register update with a lot more coming through. But anyway, let's get into the discussion of who my panelists are. And I already did definitely mention who some of them are. I'll start from my extreme right, where I have... Uh, <laughs> he's been the man in the heat of it, eh? understandably yes, so. <laughs> Eccentric. I am the host. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot introduce Let me my guests on my bear. German Shepard. Anyway, Chris Obore, <laughs> Director of Communications, the Parliament of the Republic of Uganda. Good morning, Chris. And are you okay? How has your week been? Good morning. I'm very okay. I am uh, well taken care of German Shepard. No, 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 uh, no. no. Yeah. German Shepard doesn't look like this one. This one, uh, because German Shepard is polite. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a guy. Can you no. let this man introduce I, himself see, and I am, I answer am a, my greeting? I am a dog lover. I love dogs. I understand So dogs. this one is yeah. a bobo. I can tell you. So yeah. which one this would this one, one be? Is I, is I the bulldog? In, in a bulldog, it might yeah, bite yeah, off your yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, sure. even, even if you're the owner, it, in a bad mood, it might bite off your head. Mm. Uh, but I am a bulldog. You don't go near it. At any rate, just give it respect. It's but it will give you the respect. protection you need. It will give you the protection. Okay. I will give you the right to still answer my greeting. No, a, German, a, a, German oh, shepherd, a German shepherd is a very humble uh, dog. Uh, that's but why you're not the, moment, the moment you attack its master, you yeah. discover how violent it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I am a very happy German shepherd. Okay. And uh, I'm okay. Greetings from Parliament. Greetings from Triple A. And uh, I'm glad to join this uh, senior panel of the most esteemed journalists. These two inspired us. Me and Bagenzire, we are, I think we in our order, we come after them. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, the other one, uh, complaining of the German Shepherd he trained, is the one who would teach us how to write features. Mm. Ah, you have lost the features in Uganda. In Uganda, yeah. You write two, four pages and a series. Depth. So we're writing Go. long stories, not features. Yeah, you're not writing long features anymore. Depth okay. was found. Then uh, this is an encyclopedia of broadcasting in this country. I don't know why he's, he's allowing the media to, to, to get off-road <laughs> when you're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Richard Baguma as well, definitely a media trainer, a journalist, once one, always one. And he's so passionate these days about road safety, matters health, and a lot more. Drink, if you're drinking and he finds you, uh, I don't know what the conversation will be, especially if you're going to misuse the road. Uh, those are some of his passions recently. But a very good morning to you, Mr. Richard Baguma. As always, it is the almighty, the all-powerful, the all gracious. And we are here again. Mm. Yeah, so it's nice to be with these guys. You know, it's, uh, there's something about having guys who, who you have associated with and they, um, uh, uh, and they influence the agendas. Mm -hmm. Yes, at least the uh, communication-related agendas. It is very, very useful. And um, it is also useful to see the transitions that we undergo. Uh, 
they, I started off with Pegule. We started the Health Communication Alliance together, but we started the Health Press earlier. Mm. Many years, I don't want to mention. And then the other day, somebody was hunting for him. He wants to humiliate him and put him in, in the cells. I am saying these things because, I mean. So somebody <laughs> went to try and pick Tegure because he's making commentary. Very misguided. Well, well again. Very misguided in my view. You see how you're protected by the and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and don't understand what reality is. So he's a bulldog. Yes. No. <laughs> 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 People are trying to, they are busy bodies. <clears throat> trying to say they love whoever they love. Mm. But it's nice to be here and uh, I'm sure. saying these things because they are watching. Let yeah. them not to be silly and spoil uh, things. Uh, Chris, of course Chris for me is one of the most courageous human beings <laughs> I have come across. So to think that you're going to bully him off the air, you are in real trouble. <laughs> he will come and say, I am a dog <laughs> and yeah. I am backing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so Chris, Chris, um, but this thanking me on the air and not thanking me in the wallet, <laughs> I need to take that one up with you. <laughs> that will be a conversation afterwards. I'll make sure that I mediate that conversation. Alex Satire, as well, a senior journalist, a media trainer. You're getting into training here yeah, right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Because I know that you are lecturing students of journalism right now, which is yeah, a very yeah. good thing to impart the skills that you do. Have a very good morning to you and thanks for being here. Uh, thank you, Mildred, and good morning to all the viewers. Uh, I'm always happy to be here. It is true I'm in training. I am a sessional trainer with the Aga Khan University on the training programs. Mm. I also teach journalism at Victoria University. Yeah. Great to win. You, 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 you wanted to be arrested. I think I is a dangerous investigator. <laughs> <laughs> when you go to fax, just <laughs> socket works. <laughs> <laughs> We have scores to set on this show. That's I, one thing I want to say. Please, I let don't, me take my yeah, show. I told him we must run this. I will, I will take up my show. I know I'm hosting journalists. Also, Nawaya is a journalist, yes. Uh, but also, he's into the sphere of law and making sure that the rules are followed as they are in black and white. But also, he's, you've done some training and you still do that in... Yes, I, I well. still do media training from time to time. I get, I get gigs here and there. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't done a gig for a while, for a few months now, but when I get a gig, I do it. Your friends are not it, It's always fun. You. But a good morning and thank it's you. It's always a pastor. Obari it's alone. As usual, but uh, we shall discuss after. Is a pasta? <laughs> okay, uh, yes, so yes. we start off our conversation, and you can join us on social media at NBS TV on Twitter, NBS Television on Facebook, and Next Media Services, definitely. We'll be starting off on a conversation, the latest, which is the recall of Parliament. Parliament has been recalled from recess. Of course, this is also a conversation that in the leader of opposition's um, presser earlier this week, he did ask that uh, Parliament should be recalled. There are pertinent issues to discuss, and the members of Parliament as well who did highlight that Parliament needed to be recalled. To you, Chris Obore, um, as Parliament gets back from recess, not because recess <coughs> has ended, but mm. prematurely, have to be able to get back. What are the key issues of concern or what are the items on the other paper that is what someone would be asking that Parliament is getting back for? Because we've seen recalls with particular issues that are going to be discussed, either budget or whatever it is. I've, I've asked my team to send us the other paper mm. because just I, I went to sleep very late, you know. Because? The German Shepherd has to make sure the master slept well you move around but it's not say it's <coughs> not right that the house has been called because leader of the position demanded no, not that he demanded yeah. but it's one the reality the, is yeah. by by law by 15th of march mm. all of ministerial policy statements must have been submitted to the house and today is the 15th yeah. anything beyond this would be going against the law that's largely why the house is, is sitting today. Okay. That's the most important. The Any rest, other the, the rest will be determined by the. Any other issues the, that the speed, are that's important? I'm waiting, that's why I'm waiting for the other paper. I will leave it with you. But the biggest thing for the country to know is that the ministerial policy statement must be tabled today okay. by law. Okay. Yeah. That's very good. <coughs> Richard, to you, as Parliament gets back, of course, with regard to what the law stipulates, what are some of those salient issues you think should be on the table for discussion? The, 
the, I think <coughs> what in my view. Ah. I've got the other paper. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if you could uh, feel free to let us know what exactly is. Of course, it's as usual prayer, communication from the chair, laying of papers, ministerial policy statements, okay. and budget estimates for financial year 2024 25. Mm. Minister of Foreign Affairs, he lists all those ministries. Okay, mm. okay, the different ministries that are yeah. supposed yeah. to present. Then the statement, statements by ministers on status of electricity connection status on land for persons with disabilities, mm -hmm. redesignation of members of standing committees, motion for adoption of report of the Committee on Information and Technology, motion adoption of a report of the Committee on Environment and Natural Resources, motion for adoption of the report of the Committee on Environment and Natural Resources, okay. motion for adoption of a report of the Committee on Agriculture, okay, the committee reports. Okay, yeah. the committee reports basically, yeah. like yeah. you had clearly <laughs> said. Uh, <laughs> well, away from the committee reports, the yeah. policy statements that will be presented, what would you want to see as the discussion on the floor? I think the first thing is the budget. Um, I think there should be... Uh, a, there should be care not to be distracted from the budget. Mm -hmm. it's, you see, the noise, the noise that is happening, which will just be noise and fizzle out, in my view, can take away from the budget. Mm -hmm. And then, the problem is then in the middle, we start questioning budgetary things, mm -hmm. which were passed by the same members of parliament, <laughs> and they're asking about them. <coughs> as if they didn't. And that's it for me. Is, so I think there should be uh, uh, adequate attention on the budget issues and therefore the ministerial um, statements. The, the other one is I would be very, very surprised if some member of the opposition did not, or, or a rebel MP, quote unquote, did not attempt to, for some reason, for, for either media or for being in the limelight or whatever, <coughs> or even out of conviction, bring the current exhibition issues. Mm. Yeah, I would be surprised. I think one will try, or even more than one, will try to ride on this tide um, <coughs> that, is, that is going on. The, for me, <coughs> the other thing that I think we need to be, uh, that could come up, because we are really now, we have the things on the order paper, <laughs> but then we have the things that in the session uh, that uh, should, that will come up, because I think we are within the time, okay. is uh, the, my, my beer, my pet alcohol. beer, ah, the alcohol <laughs> and drinks yeah. control beer. Yes, I think they were, the, the, the presiding officer said another 20 days, mm -hmm. and I think the 20 days are over. Uh, so we'll be seeing on the floor of parliament uh, the continued lies, uh, that you see, tourism is going to die tomorrow. <laughs> As if we have more tourism than Kenya and Rwanda who have a law. So I think those are the things I'm really looking forward to. Looking forward to. Alex, mm. in your own case, what would you want to see on the other paper? Uh, well, uh, of course, the order, you know, parliament is a legal creature. Uh, the structure of parliament, you know, uh, it has been recalled because of the... Legalities. Of the legalities, mm. of the legal mandate of parliament to make sure that the ministerial policy statements and the budgeting process is on time. But the issues in the public domain, there's no time from it. The issues raised by the exhibition are so public interest issues that I would want to see parliament uh, uh, structurally and conclusively respond to them. Uh, when these issues came up, I <coughs> have been, I, by the way, I'm still in active journalism in the online Oh, in the online <laughs> space, yeah, in the digital space. Uh, when I have done the stories, I have quoted Chris O'Boris' statement saying that they recognize that uh, issues have come up on the, in that parliament exhibition. And in the spirit of accountability, parliament will conclusively address them. So mm. I think, apart from the legalities of uh, considering the ministerial policy statement, <coughs> I think this would be an opportunity for uh, the bosses of the German Shepherd to address, <laughs> to address these issues. I, 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 I was quite impressed by the, by the structure of 
how the German shepherd responded to this. He says, mm. let the guys speak. We then shall we'll come, come and, and address conclude. this. Yeah. I, I think this will be the time to do it. To do that. For me. Okay. Uh, uh, as me. All right. We'll be delving into that a little bit later because it also emanates from another totally different conversation. <laughs> but to you, Council Gawaya, as Parliament gets back, these are the leaders because we talk about representative democracy. What are the salient issues you think should be on the table for discussion? Thank you, Mildred. First, I would like to thank NBS, Keen and your team for the, I've seen the 15 million trees drive. Yeah. Um, whatever we do as a country, we must not forget that this country needs to conserve its environment. This country needs as many trees, uh, I mean, more, more trees, to, uh, the population of trees must be far more than the population of the people. Mm. We should have a, a, a ratio of maybe a thousand trees for every single Ugandan for us to be safe um, in, our, in our habitat. And uh, so thank you, NBS, for that drive. I hope that uh, <coughs> it picks up and that government uh, also takes it from there to, uh, to make it, let, let's, let's popularize this thing mm. so that as a country we conserve our environment. If we, if we mess with the environment, we're messing with our existence. It's sure. as simple as that. Mm. Um, having said that, <coughs> I think they, for me, what Parliament should discuss now, what I think is of foremost importance, is that Parliament must rediscover its soul. I think the stories that have, that have been coming through show that uh, Parliament right now is, has, bas is, has basically flown off the handle. I think if we say we're a poor country, this is the time to reflect and say, how can we reprioritize um, our spending? I think there's a lot of money going around in Parliament. When you look at the needs we have as a country, <laughs> I think there's excess money being put in areas which are not very helpful. Um, we can go into details of this and that, but I, I think that we, have, we are doing bad in terms of the social amenities, social services, education and health. We still have a lot of work to do there. A lot of money that's go, that is going to parliament for this and that, uh, for which most of which are really questionable activities, I think can be reallocated to these mm -hmm. critical sectors so that we are seen to be serious as a country. Because when you see the sums of money that are going around in Obore's parliament, they do not reflect a country that is thinking aright. They don't reflect a country that has a co a, an, an idea of what strategic direction it must take. They don't reflect a country that recognizes and acknowledges that, look, we are poor, we need to spend <coughs> our money better. If, we, if parliament is reconvening and these questions are not on the floor, then there's a problem as a country. Okay. But I also want to sum up by saying, um, asking a question. Parliament, one of, its most core, uh, one of its core roles is to check the executive. Yeah. It's, it's one of the system of checks and balances Obviously. in the state, yes. But who checks parliament? Why should parliament determine their own re remuneration? Who calls parliament to order? I think these are things that we must look at. Can we rethink our system of checks and balances mm. so that no one body, no one institution is too strong and too unchecked so as to cause a problem to the rest of the state. What would you suggest in that kind? Because you raise a very pertinent question. When it comes to remuneration, there's been uh, very many other people who are suggesting probably this is where we get a salaries um, commission and get to see, can we be able to have a threshold? Can we be able to have uh, research data <coughs> on the determination of salaries of not only parliament, because it's not targeting parliament, but all civil servants and the different sector players? I think we, as a country, we must <coughs> rethink the whole salary structure of uh, the servants of the state. Um, we are a poor country. People must acknowledge that and then make sure that, you see, if you make politics too rewarding, you're going to have a problem because everybody will be competing to get into parliament, to get into government, to get mm -hmm. at all costs, by the way. That's why you'll kill in election time because you want to get into parliament. You'll kill election time, you want to become a minister, and all the things will come in. So... If we make politics more rewarding than the private sector, we are killing ourselves as a country. I think we need to look for moderation and say, fine, if you're, in, if you're in politics, yes, there must be a limit to what you can get from the public pass. 
But the moment you, you, you find uh, the speaker is drawing billions, the deputy speaker is drawing billions, Gundi is drawing billions, the leader of opposition, the commissioners, the MPs themselves. I mean, this thing of, for example, 200 million every time you, you come to plan for a car, why should we pay for a car for MPs? Why should we, as a, as a, as a government? Mm. Because already we're giving them a good, a good uh, remuneration <coughs> every month. Some, th some things must be discouraged and say, we're a poor country. Can we reallocate these monies into sectors which will be productive? Because politics is not being productive at this stage. You're, you're expanding the size of government. And so there's a lot of public sector, public sector spending. Now, instead of investing in the social sector, we're investing in the public sector. People are building better houses. People are driving bigger cars. But kids are still going hungry. Kids are not, are not going to school. Kids are not getting their education. They're, they're dying early in life. As a poor country, we cannot be doing this. Okay. We must stop, rethink, and re-strategize uh, going forward. All right, we'll need to take a very short commercial break, and I know I'll have to be giving time to Chris at a much later stage after the deliberations to be able to respond on that and probably will be promised a debt as to when Parliament will comprehensively come through to speak about the issues that are coming through. For now, let's take a very short breather. We'll be right back. All right, a very good morning to you once again. Thank you for keeping it NBS Television. This is the Morning Breeze Media Roundtable, bringing you the latest of what's happening in and around. But our conversations on Friday are about what stories have made headlines during the week, and we get to delve deeper into those. I still do have uh, Mr. Chris Obori, the Director of Communications Parliament, uh, Mr. Richard Baguma, Alex Atire, and Council Gawaya Tegule. Um, <clears throat> One of the issues that still remains, that through which also the, the uh, fire or the conversation around parliamentary accountability came, was from a service award that was given to um, one of the commissioners of parliament, but who is also a national unity platform deputy president. And uh, to, to, in a meeting that they sat and agreed and in a later that they did give, they said the service award was wrong. And uh, he also um, acknowledged, and they asked him that the most important thing was for him to apologize. Now, two things that come, and Richard, I'm coming to you. Two things that do come out of here is about the actions against uh, Matthias Mpuga and the impacts on the National Unity Platform as a party, but also accountability in Parliament and the monies that are actually released. First of all, I do... Because this is unprecedented. Chris could, um, could, could correct me, but... I don't think we've had a service award for a former leader of opposition as it has. There is always a first time for everything, though. Let me have a context to it before my senior comes in. And rising from what Council Tom Gawaya said, it's not true that Parliament is unchecked. It is true it is a self-accounting body. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I'm glad he's a lawyer. I'll refer him to Article 155.2 of the Constitution. That article says the head of any self-accounting entity must, by law, after preparing their budget estimates, meet the president two months before the, the presentation of the budget. It is that meeting where that self-accounting body explains their needs. Why? Because the president is the minister of finance. Mm. We run a presidential budget system. <coughs> he is the owner of the national budget. So any charge on the consolidated fund must have his blessing. But to give independence to these self-accounting bodies, the president does not come in to influence how they budget. But after preparing that budget, you must discuss with the head of state. It is the head of state who then, after agreeing with you and seeing the national wallet, says, okay, and normally they advise each, they advise each other. It is him now who puts these estimates into the national budget that is presented. Okay. It is not discussed because it has already been discussed with the head of state. It's not that the parliament wakes up and says, we are going to have this money, we shall have it. 
the constitution, the controller of the national pass is the head of state. So the service even if, even, inclusive. even if even if you a self accounting <coughs> body, you cannot charge the constitutional panel without him. Okay. Now this the award thing is really political heirs. Once the pres the, the budget of parliament has been passed, <coughs> the commission <coughs> has the power to use this money for the well-being of members and staff. Okay. Okay. You get the point now, uh, mm. I'm coming to. Mm. So it is not that the service award was a different charge on the consolidated fund. It, this is the decision of the parliamentary commission, which by law is empowered to make decisions for the good running of the institution and the well-being of the, the MPs. Chris, Nobody can you. dispute the decision mm. of the commission. Yeah. The commission I, did not seek additional funds. But the, the budget had been passed and approved that by the it. president. All right, I'll be coming back to you, and thank you for that clarity. Mm. Uh, back to you, um, Richard, with regard to that, because also the powers in parliament, which uh, Council Gawaya Tegule was questioning, come into the question. Over to you. First, Tegule has, uh, has ambitions of being an MP. He's forgetting that these things are being recorded. They will be revisited on him. He will be the first one to take the 300 million. It will not be 200 now, because cars have increased in value. <laughs> so they will be given. Th he will be the first one to take the 300 million for the car and defend it. So you see, sometimes I am careful with the things I say because they will be revisited. Or on maybe he will say that. I, I don't want to be politically correct now and then, uh, <laughs> and then. Because he wants to be MP, has stood before. <clears throat> there is no reason why members of parliament as public officials should not get cars. ROC 5 chairmen, ROC 3 chairmen, commission, commissioners, <laughs> assistant commissioners, a, a senior economist gets a brand new Toyota, which costs 280 million at the minimum. Yeah. And then an MP gets 200. <laughs> this one, it is serviced for him. It has, he has a driver, it is fueled for him. Why as public officials shouldn't MPs? get cars. I don't subscribe to this one. This thing, we are poor, we are poor. We are, so, so that's one. Uh, the second thing is, um, I don't know why the Honorable Mpuga was given just 500 million. You think it should have been more? About a billion. Why? Why not? Didn't he render a, a, a valuable service? I, I don't see why not. If the Honorable Mpuga, if the, the, the Honorable Chagurani had not decided to go in the backyard of Mpuga to undermine him anyway, even before the 500. Send his brother to go undermine him. If that altercation was not there, if the move had not been to humiliate him and politically remove him, the 500 million would be no problem at all. I still insist. It is only because the, the, the leader of the NUP, for whatever reasons, his, his, his uh, bulldogs had already been abusing this man. The other MPs who are his friends had already been complaining, why are you attacking this man? So this was an opportunity to politically try and finish him. So, so, so we can say nice things, uh, what you, moral. We can be moral but, here. But, but he says yeah. that they had their meeting, the top leaders meeting. He agreed that this money was actually wrong. Because first of all, he started but, but the But the, the word of this one again is the word of the other one. Mm. We have heard the words from both. But you see, for me, I don't want to go there. I want to say the reason is the political machinations to kill the, the political uh, 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 career. career of Mpug. That's it. This is what we are talking about. Uh, and we can moralize whatever we want. That's OK. It's part of the leadership. The, the other thing for me is uh, that parliament takes less than a trillion shillings the whole annual year, less than a trillion shillings of the 50 trillion that we spend. That does not mean that they should not be frugal. But you see the way that this thing has been cast is that parliament is taking all the money uh, <laughs> from, the, from the Ugandan coffers. Just, so if one, one trillion out of 50 trillion of a budget, what, what percentage or fraction? Is that the, 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 you see the, the focus is now 
on Parliament. We have had, by the way, focus previously for NGOs. Mm, mm. And we are looking at the, the bosses in NGOs were being paid more, are being paid more than the members of parliament. That's what the exemption showed us. It showed us the salaries of the CEOs of NGOs. And they were more than what we pay in parliament. The, and people are going to say, that is taxpayers' money. I am in the NGO sector. I'm in the civil society. The money does not come for the elites for us. It comes, the people, it comes for the people of Uganda. So if we are putting the standard, we should put a standard on all. I agree there should be frugality in the government. There is profligacy. Mm -hmm. I have said it here again and again. They, 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 however, the attempt to cast the parliament that is the most profligate of government, I do not agree that that is true. The final thing that uh, I say is when you are a, a monkey and you climb up a tree, you expose your behind. So poor Garrett, him have his behind roasted <laughs> because he has risen, <laughs> and so he exposes it. That, that's that's uh, and he's and he's in the center of this. It is the same as Chris Obore. Chris Obore, when he was in his other position with the mentorship of the because you see when come, somebody comes and says uh, uh, Nani, the guru mentored me. And I was rabid, I was what? So what about your teacher? <laughs> what about your mentor? Was he double rabid? Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you see, but, but you see, Chris was doing his work where he was. He's now doing his work where he is. But Jezira will do the same. But Jezira will go to parliament tomorrow and will take a 300 million shillings car <laughs> and will justify <laughs> it. <laughs> so I don't want us to be only theoretical. You see, it is nice for me to come here and take the moral high ground. Do you find any, any, any salt, for lack of a better word, do you find any pertinent issues, salient issues that are being raised? Yes, I have said to them, if you bring the recording of the last show, that's why I said we are repeating ourselves. Mm. I said, you see, if you sit on whatever, however legalistic it is, mm -hmm. if you sit on a group and you award yourself half a billion service award for one year, we are going to question you. Yes, so, so you might have done it legally, but we are going to question what you have done. The morality. Yes, I said it. I said too, we must rationalize pay. Not just of government people, of all of us. We must rationalize pay. There is no system of rationalizing pay across. <coughs> that is why you will pay a cleaner in one government agency, government agency an equivalent of three times of a teacher in, an, in a government school. This is happening across, by the way, across several agencies that a cleaner is getting more than three times the pay of a teacher or a policeman. So we must, so there are pertinent issues that are being raised. Okay. They are being crowded and submerged and drowned by the noise, by each one of us competing to take the more high ground. Mm. I don't want to be part of that uh, moral high ground uh, Josoras. No. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, to you, Alex, uh, it all emanates from a service award. Mm -hmm. A party sits down and says, this is wrong. And we advise you as our leader, step down. Was there any problem with the party being able to do that? But also, under that, emanates conversations about accountability, expenditures in parliament. Yes, uh, well, number one, um, you know good journalism works in context. And uh, the context of the current issues around the service awards is that, you know, you focus on Mpunga. <laughs> the service award was it all the, the commissioners, mm. except Zake, which I think for legal reasons could not be uh, awarded because I think the, the parliament had already voted to remove him from the commission. So it is uh, contextually problematic to focus on Mpuga uh, and not on all the others who have received it. I think the other guys received 400 million, for example. The number two, uh, now we are approaching these issues as a moral issue. But unfortunately, it is not legally wrong. It is uh, an illegal, I, I mean, it's a legal, it's a legal uh, award. So I think 
the action by NUP, the NUP leadership, and the way they have gone around the, the award, I think is, is self, um, I, I could call it self, uh, not self-defeating, but I, I, I think it is uh, self, it is inflicting a negative, negative energy in the party. I think they, should ha they could have handled it better. Mm. While uh, it is true that corruption and, uh, and you cannot even, because it is, uh, it is a illegal award, you can not even classify it as corruption. Mm -hmm. You can't. You can't. You can't. There is no legal basis to say that Mpuga taking that uh, service award is corruption. Though it is mo because the, the, the mantra of opposition, uh, most of the opposition parties in Uganda is to say that because there is a lot of lavish spending in, in, in the government, so they, they are coming in to chew that. Uh, it is right for them to to oppose the service award, but I think the way they have gone about it, uh, the way they have focused on uh, Ampuga, and the way they have focused on the moral the the, the 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 moral side of it, I think it is it is going to cause a lot of negative ramifications within the party. And when I look at this, all this thing, I think it could have been a setup actually to make sure that Noop is, gets into this kind of position. Because at the end of the day, I think by the time they get out of this, Noop will have factions. And when you look at our political environment uh, in the opposition, all the opposition parties today already have factions. It was Noop that was standing without uh, clear factions. Uh, so the way they have responded to it, I think, was uh, uh, particularly uh, showed lack of uh, political experience. I think they could have handled it in a better Much way. Much better. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Council Gawaya, back to you, that we're having a, a political party that is coming out to speak against what they consider immoral, for lack of a better word, because... Um, this is money that they feel was not a right thing to do. And they say that in their meeting, allegedly, the same person, the receiver of the award, agreed to the same. But there are also pertinent issues then that stem out, um, including also issues that go to as much as recruitment, accountability in terms of um, particular members of staff of uh, parliament, which also partly has been raised in the Auditor General's report. Well... <coughs> I do agree with Alex. They, you cannot read too much into Mpuga's uh, money, the 500 million. One, it's not, it's not that much money as uh, Gunya said, because that's about $150,000. Mm -hmm. mm. that's, that's not a lot of money, generally speaking. Um, but for me, if it just speaks to the issue of uh, conceptual clarity, mm -hmm. uh, having clear systems and structures, having clear policies and laws, if the law provides that a person who has served as leader of opposition gets a service award, then the law is the law. If he get, gets that money, there is nothing wrong with it. Um, if, if the next leader of opposition will, will get the same amount of money, there's nothing wrong with it. If the one after that is going to get the same amount of money, there's nothing wrong with it. Okay, if whatever amount of money it is, if the law provides for it, then legally speaking, there's nothing wrong with it. And uh, you cannot call that corruption. I think that was maybe, uh, there was lack of conceptual clarity in that regard. Um, I would hesitate to, to call Mr. Mpuga corrupt just because he received a statutory payment. Um, if the law provides like that, then there, there, there is no case to answer there. You can raise the moral issues, but what's the moral issue here? I think they think, it goes back to what I was saying, that I think we need to rethink our spending if at all the public sector is um, ridiculously rewarding far more than the private sector, you're always going to have problems. So if somebody is in the public sector, there must be a balancing act that there is, there is a way things should, should pan out. Otherwise, without that, you, you're going to have all these issues coming up. Uh, having said that, I still want to now again agree with Alex. The way this was handled by Noob was wrong. Um, this, this young man, Joe Chigozi, 
I think as, at some point, last I checked, he had a, a position here, chief of strategy. Mm. No, so, no, chief strategy officer. I think yeah, that was his yeah, position. Yeah. The MD, I think. No, chief of strategy officer, uh, mm. next media, Joseph Chigozi, yes. Yes. Now, that, uh, I saw that m some years ago, and I was, uh, the more I thought about it, the more correct I thought it was that every organization must have st strategic direction. You must have people who focus on strategy. And that's, I think, the American um, paradigm, that the guys whose work is just to sit down, strategize, like they observe the, uh, the, the, the landscape, they see where the dots are, they connect the dots and tell them, guys, this is where we're going to do. This is what's going to happen tomorrow, we must do this, we must do that. I mean, guys on Wall Street, these guys don't sleep, they're just strategizing. Now, part, political parties in Uganda must learn strategy. The way Mpuga was handled shows maybe Noop can do better in terms of strategy. Um, what was the strategy there? Because then, you, if you look at the backlash, it's, it's like you're shooting yourself in the foot over and over. Uh, so I think that Noop should re-strategize, um, look at things, handle things better. Um, Puga is a big man in the sense of he's a political colossus. He has been here for some time. He's an experienced politician. There is a way he should be handled. Mm. If at all, even when he's wrong, and especially when he's wrong, call him aside. Have a party mechanism. Deal with the issue quietly. They said they, they had that meeting and they gave an ultimatum for him to be able to and, step and, down. And, and, and that is the why. And that is you why they came You cannot give an ultimatum. And that was wrong. Uh, there's, there's no way the party president should read the prosecution publicly against <laughs> Mpuga. Yes. Uh, that, that, that was wrong. That, that strategy is, is uh, maybe it is right, but I think it is totally wrong. Mm. Eh? The, pub, the president is leading public prosecution against Mpuga before all the internal processes have been exhausted. I, mm. I think, I don't know, I, I think they were set up. Can I put in context? They were set up for a right, big uh, force. Council, are you done? Because yes. I would uh, no, you can your conversation. Yes. Uh, please go ahead. You see, the Bundo can chip Allow me, German, <laughs> allow me to put this in context. Why speak the way speak for parliament? <laughs> The institution of this country, yeah. a state institution, that is for all of us. And me, Chris Oboro, who works there, I don't own it. I am there momentarily. Anyone will be there. It has been there. So that's the one I'm defending, that institution. Because I'm not foolhardy to think, because I work there, I am the beginning and the end of that institution. No. I defend it as a state institution first. Then there are actors who come periodically to manage this institution. I have kept saying here, it is so central. We need to run a country with a parliament. Has, I mean, you remember the issue of the port and what you put in? I said it here. Do not break the port because of the content you have put in. Let's protect the port. It's very useful for us. That's how I speak the way I speak. Now, when you talk about Bagenzira has put it in a very good context. The people to be held account are both the supervisors of parliament. It is the ruling party and the opposition parties. They are all there. The commission has a prime minister. It has a minister of finance. It has a leader of opposition. It has a backbench commissioner of opposition. Once you belong to no, that is a political activity you have. Mm. Once you come to parliament, the administration of parliament act, you have a duty beyond your party to contribute to the building of this state institution called parliament. The danger we are seeing now, you come to parliament, you become an administrator of parliament, but you want to administer it in your political, you are not able to, to say here, I am a leader of this state institution. That is supposed to run for the benefit of all the citizens today and tomorrow. That's the mix I want us to separate. So in Puga's award, all those commissioners was in line with their contribution to this state institution. Whether you're NRM, whether you're opposition, that is how parliament runs. The danger we have seen... And the party that is seeking to probably take the same position, position. and lead the country is <laughs> saying, you cannot be doing this even before we take power. If that we are for something that is different. Now, taking power and running a parliament are two different things. You don't take power from parliament, Mildred. You, the constitution, the lawyers here, knows how you take state power. 
it is not in the parliament. You, are a, you have a duty to build the institution because it is beyond you, the actor. And in That's building, they're what, saying what, there should be accountability, there should be perfect, spending perfect, that is resonating perfect with what the Perfect, Mildred. I even are. told you how the budget is arrived at. Even I can tell you, as we speak, the Speaker of Parliament wrote to Auditor General to come and look into these issues. Mm. Parliament does not work. Wait a minute. You said the Speaker wrote yes, to the Auditor General to yes. look into the issues of the It is the, the Auditor expedition. General that is first line of accountability for parliament. Okay. You are not going to run state institutions like a crowd. Then you will not run them. Then you are different. You cannot run a state. When you go to Lumu Street and make a decision there, then why are you here in the first place? The state has a structured method of handling. This is not to say the public should not talk. When a public talks, we call that the policy universe. You pick the issues for processing. You appoint Alex with his capacity to save these issues. And there is a structure in which you can arrive on conclusive evidence. So you cannot expect now Parliament to say, Alex has said so and so is a thief. Then you, it's a statement. He's not a thief. Guy was saying, you're not a thief. What, what are we working on? What are we doing? Mm -hmm. That's why I told you conclusively these issues will be collated. What is trash will be trashed. Because they're not accountable for rumors. Otherwise, you'd make leaders uh, all the time transferring to rumors. But the point I'm saying here, we must watch the political actions. The political actors are seeking relevance in the parliament okay. in a way that undermines the very institution. They must be held responsible. Mm. You should be asked, because you in opposition are in the management of parliament. What is your conduct to this management, apart from politicking? If you look at the targeted things I was mentioning, I can tell you. Yeah, and, one and, of the and things, while you answer them, what do you consider rumors? What do you consider the actualities in the conversation? Because we see, we see what is coming out. We see mm -hmm. the political undertones. And I keep telling them, why do you make my life difficult? Do you want me to begin breaching the standing orders <laughs> by revealing what you do? <laughs> because, Alex, I can tell you, I saw the other day, there are people I think only hire to finish in Puga. Oh, he went to visit Segrinya in Nairobi, six days. He took this money. Oh, but I can tell you that contradiction here. Even Honorable Joel Senyonyi went to see Segrinya. And Parliament paid. Parliament paid for him five days to visit Honorable Segrinya. Mm -hmm. is, it, is the contest because Mpuga got six days, don't got five? Why, why is the principle of undermining one leader? It's, it's more rejoinder. Uh, you see, Chris, I, I can understand where you're coming from. I, I am a journalist <laughs> who takes care of context. But you see, Parliament, Parliament as an institution of Parliament, should be one of um, uh, to lead the way in terms of responding to public interest. We cannot dismiss the exhibition. The exhibition may have weaknesses, mm -hmm. but our duty is to respond. If Parliament must lead the way, if the people are scrutinizing Parliament, whether it's uh, an elite group, I have seen somebody, for example, go on Twitter and say these people, uh, a minority on Twitter, mm -hmm. other people are not interested in this. But Parliament must respond in the spirit of public interest. Parliaments must respond. I to agree. I can tell you. They clapped uh, Parliament. And uh, lastly, uh, in the spirit of freedom of expression. <laughs> you know, those people have the, <laughs> the audacity actually to even uh, circulate to those falsehoods. And it is the duty of Parliament, for example. And there is a law with regard uh, to that because no, you no, cannot No, 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 freedom of expression. Uh, and it is, for, as me, it is but the duty of parliament, for freedoms example. Freedoms are subject I have to seen, for example, laws. I've seen so many things about Semu Junganda. And I, have, I did not comment. <laughs> <laughs> I was rattled. I was disturbed. Uh, but I have seen his uh, response, his written response. Semu Junganda is a guy who is not on, uh, on social media. And I have now understood the context of how he drew, for example, the allowances that, that they were being peddled as double allowances. He said, because of the, the way government operates, you can do an activity and be paid uh, later. later. 
and you can be paid on the same day for different activities. And then, of course, the context of the, of the per diems to go for the pilgrimage. I, I, I can understand. I can understand. Okay. So uh, it is the duty of no, Parliament. The, the other guys actually may Zire. not have. Baje because you are, in a, you, are in a, you are in a position where you have all this information. And, and you can uh, Well, the other guys bring, it is interesting, by the way, the kind of information they are They're bringing. bringing on, yeah. So it is your duty to tell me that the context of what this guy has brought out is this. Ole, okay, Alex, like me, oh, thank you, Alex. Uh, let, let, let's give Chris the time I'm in agreement um, a few with you. minutes before yeah. we take a break. Even the clerk parliament told the monitor, mm -hmm. who are we not to be accountable? They cast the same thing to the clerk parliament. And I even said the first statement I made mm. was, we are following the exhibition. You are not beyond We are not dismissive of the exhibition. That we did. Now, the issue is, <laughs> Alex, it's different from me telling Tom that this is the context. You are not going to compete with the mob. For them, they are saying, Uyo, 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 Uyo. Beat him, beat her. That's what we are saying. That while we must be accountable, are we accountable to people who are ready to receive accountability? How do you wake up somebody I said on the other day that it is easy to wake up Alex who has fallen deep asleep from a tired day. You touch him, he says, oh, mm -hmm. he wakes up. But a guy who is pretending to sleep, even if you drum, put music, you will think he's sleeping. Because he doesn't want to wake up. Some people have just decided not to want to listen to the other side. Okay. That's what I'm saying. If you talk about the recruitment, I am supposed to respond, Alex. But public service, I respond in a structured way. I am supposed to guard the information of the state. There is information I cannot give out because of so many considerations. Mm. It's not that we are not able to respond, but I work through a structured system. I'm not a social media scavenger and you who sign is your sleeping and you do. Well. If you talk about recruitment, I keep telling them, do you want me to open up from what I know? Oh, Anita Mong has brought her relatives. Anita Mong, come on. He's giving donations the, to the, everybody they, they are, every Uganda. There are past commissioners in that parliament with their children, with their what was Anita even an MP. You are addressing an issue beyond Anita, but you want to personalize, to malign her, like parliament was run in a very nice way until Anita came into place. But if I come and tell you, Gawaya, that <laughs> from the time the commission was set up, Anita was teaching. I can't, but must I come and say, you Alex, your son of so and so. You came here. Was Anita there? Okay. So let's address the issues with a willingness to reform the institution. Okay. But if you make it personal on Impoga, on Anita, that's a political agenda. Okay. That's what I was warning that the exhibition, which seemed to have that thinking of holding people to account, seems to have been hijacked or serving particular political interest. And that politics now makes the accountability demand lost in the noise. I hear yeah, you but, but still, I, I also thought that um, you know, these, those exhibitions can be risky because they hold uh, defamatory implications half the time. And I, I saw the issue of uh, Semuju. It, it looked exciting at first. So he received two payments. Uh, so he was in place at the same time. And I think mm. Ofono Pondo also capitalized on that on Twitter. That I'm not like those who are into place mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm. And so everybody was having Semuju for supper. To, but my, to my very non disappointment, <laughs> I was not disappointed. How can, that, that, that having how can my chief uh, talker and senior jump on that? Uh, yes, uh, uh, of, of one, yeah, and number five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> because now, when, when somebody explains, then you're like, okay, I think we are wrong. So if I'm doing the exhibition, then I must rethink and say, okay, fine. Mm. Uh, isn't it very? It would it not be a good idea to cross check? Have context. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Make sure you get the context correct, mm. because then you you get an issue running out with it, only to discover that look, you're running out with the wrong thing, and you're like. I can now. I cannot run back now. Uh, and and the they don't even have apologize. the humility to correct. Yes. Like journalism teaches. Yeah. Yes. I've just yeah. told you, I cannot begin talking about what members get, how they get it, because it's wrong. I've just given an example. Mm. They, have been, um, they have been attacking Honorable Mpuga for going to visit Honorable Senyon. Honorable mm -hmm. in Segirinya. Segirinya. But I'm telling you this as, to elaborate my, illustrate my point. Honorable Senyon, you saw the current level position went to see Segrin, and the parliament paid for both. 
And is it wrong for them to go and see Segrinya? Not at all. Because he's a fellow he's a member of parliament. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you now begin condemning Honorable Impuga? And not the other one. And not the other one. Is that politics? All right. Yeah. Well, we will get back the discussion to you, but I totally agree with matters of context. I agree, yes, accountability mm -hmm. needs to be given, but how do you seek and the, the accountability? Do you need to think mm -hmm. about it? But <laughs> key among it, of course, is the rationalization of pay. Even while I was hosting the PSST last week, he said, we just don't need rationalization of agencies. The entire government needs to be rationalized. Let's get back with much more. All right. Thank you so much for keeping it on BS Television and welcome back from that short commercial break. It is the Media Roundtable. Comes to you every Friday where journalists in their perspective make sense of some of the stories that are making headlines or made headlines during the week. Uh, Mr. Chris Obore, the Director of Communications Parliament is still with us. Uh, Mr. Richard Baguma, he can't wait for the alcohol bill to get back on the floor of Parliament. Uh, um, Atire, Alex and uh, Council Gawaya Tegule. We'll be switching gears to matters politics because... Uh, Legal as well. <laughs> Legal as well is, is where we would be going, of course, when yeah. someone dies. Parliament um, needs to reforms, the, but not this stampede of causing confusion. We're not going back there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're Thank not going you. back there. But let's talk a bit about uh, the Dokolo uh, woman member of parliament by election that is coming through, of course, after the demise of the late Barbara Cecilia or Atim Ogwal. FDC quoted uh, Dr. Alwatch, who is the daughter of the late, to uh, replace her. Uh, we've seen uh, nomination six of the candidates uh, from FDC, from NRM, um, from National Unity Platform, as well as UPC. And then we also have independent candidates who are going to um, be able to come through. Richard, I still want to start with you. What are the odds for and against? And literally, this also takes us into the wider context and conversation about by-elections and their impact on democracy. Democracy, democracy, <laughs> democracy, really. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> the, the, you see, there are two issues in my mind mm. that, that uh, are determining this. First of all, in my view, this is not an important election. What makes you think it's not the an important? The woman representative of Odokor mm. comes to parliament when the parliament is reaching its end. That's the issue that many people are So really, are what, is, what, what is the importance of that? So that she does what? Uh, so first of all, it's, in my view, it's not that important an election. It can go whichever way it goes. It will be some individual coming to also be an MP. Have, will a, still have, spend a, have a history on the AC, of the, on, the, on, we will the, still on her spend CV. On the election, nevertheless. Yeah, yes, because it is good to earn some money from an election. Uh, but I also two things. One, I think it's it's a useful, uh, it's a, a useful learning exercise for for the rulers, for the current rulers for 2026. Uh, how do you deal with that region? Can you stuff boxes? Can you can you plant people in there to manage the regional outcome come 2026? So I think it's it's a, an important um, uh, learning exercise. Uh, I also think that uh, the, the two things, one, the family, the, the institutionalization of family politics uh, that I think is extremely important for the people at the very top, uh, because now you anchor. How, how, do you, how do you keep quarreling with the, when I'm bringing my own family people? when it is the practice, when it becomes a national practice. It, and it is happening everywhere in the East, in the North, in the work. Yeah, so but I, uh, Richard, the difference of this is uh, <coughs> hopefully going to be a democratic process, I not one of imposing I your child I over an institution, I over a party, over a nation, I mentioned the word over an army. I mentioned the word democracy three times <laughs> when I was starting. I said democracy, democracy, democracy. <laughs> I, I, if you didn't uh, hear my... <laughs> You've repeated for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so the institutionalization of the fam familiarization, that's what I, I've been calling it, the familiarization of politics. Sort of hereditary. I, I think this is continu a continuation. Um, so if you say it is democratic her hereditization, okay, let be hereditization through the ballot box, fine, then that is fair. So how then do you challenge me 
uh, at whatever point I bring. Do you think you've already called the election by using that aspect? No, that's the fact that uh, we were all running after the dot, that is already settled. The, 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 the familiarization of politics. The other thing is I think the politics of individual merit. I think that's what is going to play out again uh, here. They, they, for parties, part that these people in Dokoro are going to be voting parties. I, I don't think that. <laughs> Mildred, sorry. <laughs> and, uh, my seniors, he's very deep. I've been listening to him. He has certain reservations about the political uh, mechanisms and dynamics. First, I want to be, now I'm speaking as, not I want, to, I want to give you your time. I want him to finish and then no, you'll be he able to he can, speak. He, he, can can I asked him. <laughs> he can I'm speaking as speaking Obore. You're speaking as a journalist, yes. Chris Obore, yes. The truth is you're saying, first of all, for me, that Dokolo thing, I wish we had caught all of her death. Honorable Cecilia, she not have died because she was not going to seek another election. It's unfortunate death brings us, these are unexpected events. Mm. She, she actually, to, yes, had talked about Yeah, she that. wasn't going to. I wish God had given her to finish this term. Would not have that. But Dokolo is a reflection of her problems politically. But it's going to be a contest between UPC, NRM, and the independent. No party there is going to be a party. Because you talk about FDC, they are yeah. going to undermine themselves. Because the FDC is fighting among itself. Noop, you know, that Northern is not starting. Because no, uh, insults <laughs> do not serve certain purposes. In the north, you insult the parents, they beat you. So if you are noob and you go to Lang or where you insult the people, they will beat you. These insults should remain here and in the social media. They will not take that, that you go and insult an old man. They know, they will beat you. So by that alone, the culture of a party, they can't take root in certain areas. Okay. You have to be responsive. Hmm. But I must admit to you people, the next campaigns in Uganda will be between NRM and Patriotic League of Uganda. <laughs> there is no political formation that is going to challenge NRM. <laughs> the way NRM handles the Patriotic League of Uganda determines the next. In fact, which I am do you have for that? I'm telling you, I'm you're, you're giving PLU too no, no. much credit, my I, brother. I, I, this is why. Too much credit. I, can I, I say that why? Is why I'm asking that. Can I, can I say? The way NRM handles PLU will determine the next election. If they get a merger, NRM has to sail through. If they don't merge, PLU will be the next leader, leader, will be the largest opposition party in the parliament. And this is why. You see what FDC has gone through. You see what NUP is going through. You have hurt your vice president. PLOE has attacked where your vice president was holding fort. Massacre, the Gureta massacre. You have seen the activities there. You have seen the insults that is happening as a modus operandi of political parties that you must abuse people to ensure that you are strong. Insults are for the weak people. PLOE, you, if you study it, they haven't adapted the insulting methodology. But, but, are, I'm telling but you. The insults you're referring to so are social media you, you and, go, and, you, and you cannot refer, put them on NUP. No, 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 no. We, <laughs> see, we see people. Me let saying me, let me I, I work with NBS TV when I'm not people, officially. We see uh, no, people. Me, let me first finish. Because okay, now go ahead, because I am yes. very, very careful about Perao. Yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> go. Yeah. So I, I, let I, me finish. See, let me tell you, Mildred. Okay. This talk of NRA, EMU, and Perao. Uh, I have maintained that we are dealing with the NRA. There is no NRA, there is no Perao. We are dealing with the NRA. The, the decider of the election in 2026, like the previous elections, will be the guy. It's the coercive instrument, the one who has the coercive instrument. And it will be spiced, oh, oh no, it will be softened by money. But the one who has the coercive instrument will take the ballot box. In these re republics of ours, that is going. And so you combine the gun and the money, and you take it. We have seen it play out in Teso. We have seen it play it out the, 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 everywhere. And, and, and that, for me, 
is what is going to happen. So this talk of Parao is, is uh, Parao to be a political party and rival? Who, that the chairman of Parao is rivaling his father? And you think that one is going to, <laughs> to <laughs> that, that, that is, uh, <laughs> it is going to remain a rig, which is, uh, a, 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 a rig is a what? A appendage. And, and the NRA will continue its story. It's why I told you, Richard, <laughs> it depends on how NRM no, deals already, with... For me, I'm saying it's already handled. Okay. Yeah, that is already handled. So then the next election is <laughs> NRM. Yeah, yeah, it's the NRA because continuing Pilau, its Richard, management to continue. Pilau, of the, uh, to the accredited. Okay, and, and at that, the, I'll give you the space for you to as well bring in the conversation about the Dokolo. Yes. What are the odds for and against? You yes. already so said it's Pilau, a Pilau, the approach so far, is not the abuses. People are getting tired of these insults. That somebody sits in their room and pays 200 people to attack a people. You reach a point and you say, what is this? Before you lead me, you're already killing me. Before you have coercive instruments, you're already coercing me. And you think you're coming to lead me? Pilau, from their structure, up to the village level. It's PLU. They are not. It's PLU. PLU. Let's keep it Sorry. PLU. PLU. A free expression. So, uh, PLU. Okay. So far, they are methods. No misrepresentation. They are methods. No misrepresentation. No, no, let, let me have Chris. Yeah. They, 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 are, they are methods so of PLU so far. Chris is a, a student no, 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 no. of communication. Alex, let Chris yes. conclude and then I'll come to you. PLU, in their approach so far, they have tried to get off the the insult approach. Even when they talk about NRM, you find, even when people challenge them, I follow on social media, they don't respond by. Period. But the other but party. In Dokolo. Uh, in Dokolo, I've told you already, the winner will be either UPC, NRM, or an independent. I don't expect any of those to win in Dokolo. But politics is politics. Mm. I may be wrong. Mm. But from what I've told you already, the FDC would have an upper hand there. But I've told you, in the North, you do not insult an old person. But the FDC has a candidate who might get a sympathy vote because of what Richard was talking about historically. But UPC, that is his homeland. UPC also has a sympathy vote. In fact, you challenge a Kenna and Lira, you have attacked the spirit of a body. Okay. There are people, old men with gray hair, who will say, our orphan, even when the man is an adult. So sympathy is either way. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, Alex, I come to you on the Doko Lores. I, uh, I think, unfortunately, uh, you see, Dokolo is uh, a, an opposition seat. By the way, I see things forming out on the ground. It's, it's a city that is uh, going to be falling to NRM. Why do I say that? Mm -hmm. I agree with uh, Chris that primarily Dokoro is uh, with the UPC on, on TV. stronghold. On TV. Uh, Lira. It's the wider Lira, actually. Mm -hmm. And I expect the UPC candidate to be very strong. But these days, there is no difference between UPC and NRM. Then if the UPC candidate won, <laughs> NRM will have won. And because of the fragmentation that is happening, normally w when you see the history of the by-elections in the last three or four election cycles, when the opposition has acted with uh, cohesion, I think they have won most of the by-elections, even mm. the by, uh, in, in, in instances where the, the seat was for, was for NRM and there is a by-election, the opposition wins it when they have acted with cohesion. But you can see now the fragmentation on the ground. Noop has nominated the candidate. I don't think Noop have a chance. The FDC have nominated the candidate, but the FDC is already uh, infested with uh, uh, challenges of internal cohesion. And I don't think they will act uh, uh, with that strength of FDC as we know. But normally they would have needed uh, support from all the po uh, actors in the opposition. Mm. And now the opposition is uh, eating each other. I think it gives NRM a chance to steal that seat. Uh, if NRM does not win the seat, <laughs> I think the, the UPC candidate has a chance. And as I said, 
these days there is no much difference between UPC and the NRM. Okay, yeah. thank you. And who do you think may take the day in your own view? I think the UPC NRM candidate. you still said? UPC candidate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to you, Councilor Gawaya Tegule, as we wrap up the conversation on the Dokolo campaigns are now in high gear ahead of the election next Thursday. No, on this one, I'm, I'm, I must say I'm biased mm. because okay. um, Dr. Rose Mary Ogwal mm. is my OG. Uh, I sat with Dr. Ogwal in Namagunga side by side of uh, this school debate. So I know her very well. She's a very good lawyer. She's very articulate. She's a person of principle. Um, the Dr. Gwal that I know would be a very fine member of parliament. If, mm. uh, and I think there comes a time when we must look beyond the parties and say, who is the person standing? If, if it's going on sheer merit of the individual, on sheer persona, on the sheer, or just on the sheer, uh, just cons consideration of what an excellent MP one would make, mm. I think Dokolo is better off voting Dr. Ogwal. Uh, the simple the vote for Cecilia Gual aside, um, Dr. Gual in her own right is a, I mean, she's an amazing girl. If, I mean, the, the people of Dokolo, I mean, it's, it's your election, but if I were you guys in Dokolo, I would look at this Dr. Rosa Gual and say, this girl has something. I mean, she has a doctorate, she's a lawyer, she has experience. But even as a person, when she begins to speak, you know this is not just an easy, this is not somebody you take lightly. So the, the merit of uh, Cecilia's daughter should, I hope, will persuade the people of Dokol to say, I think let us get somebody as good as the person who, who she's replacing. Okay. If they want someone who will be as good as Cecilia was, then the right person in my view. Because I, I knew, I met Dr. Gwalu in the 80s, basically. Because I was, I was in Emiliango and, and she was in her sister school in Amagunga. So we met a lot of the time and we debated together. I know this girl. She's fantastic. Okay. Vote to Gual and you'll have no, you'll have no regrets. Uh, forget the parties. The Look is, at the candidate. The beauty is we're having this conversation in a campaign period. So all the conversations and positivities are warranted. But our time is really first spent and we need to bring this to a break. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very no, much, Dr. Gwal, she's, she's amazing. Yeah. Believe you me, you'll see. No, no, thank no, you, I have Councilor no problems against her. Okay. Thank you, Alex Latere. <laughs> thank you, uh, Mr. Richard Boguma. And to you, the, uh, the German bulldog. Shepherd. Yeah, the German <laughs> Shepherd. But uh, if I, if okay, I would ask Chris Obore, if I may make him, if thank I were Chris NRM Obore. strategist, yes. because the parties are in this array, I would encourage PLOU to become the biggest opposition party in the parliament and the transition will be so smooth. Because what we see... If I was a strategist, that is... I thought I had ended the show. The show. <laughs> Let's begin. I thought I had ended. <laughs> Alex, Chris. I'll give you 30 seconds. Chris, you know Chris is a student of communication. <laughs> yes. Now, you know, propaganda is a whole topic and movie <laughs> in communication theory. Eh? But for Christians, it should be called the that, property. So. <laughs> and the fact that uh, Noop, yes, Noop deploys level. guys to, to <laughs> propagate their, their line, and mm. if you are not in line, they abuse you. It's just propaganda. Mm. Now, that line that PLU is an opposition, it's also propagandist. Agenda PLU, setting. PLU can never mm. be an it's opposition. going to agenda setting theory. <laughs> now, and uh, they are reacting and to that. And the one is concluding <laughs> with a problem. He has changed the entire... Let's end the show. I have ended the show. And I want to say... Anymore. If I was a strategist for NRA... I want to say thank you so much for joining us. Let this continue, but we're done. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Mildred Toise. Good morning and God bless you.